With the market being crazy right now, with interest rates seemingly higher than ever before, and with appreciation looking like roughly 25% over the last year, much of that in just the past six months, is it the worst time to buy a house right now? Not just in Texas, but in Austin, Texas? Well, in this video, we are going to tackle that subject, bring in a few statistics and break it down for you to help you know what to expect. And so hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a good enough idea of whether or not it is the right idea for you. Stay tuned. Hey again, everybody. This is Frank with the Living in Austin group at EXP Realty. Every week we put out new content about living in Austin, Texas, the good and the bad. So consider subscribing if you haven't already and ring that little bell to get notified whenever we put out a new video. We also love the reach outs we get now all the time from people just like you in need of our help when relocating to Austin, Texas. So keep them coming. Don't hesitate. Whether you're nine days away or 90, reach out to our team. Whether you shoot us a text, send us an email, give us a call any day of the week, any time of day. So yes, in this video, we are talking about whether or not it is the worst time to buy a house in Austin, Texas, and in addition to that, just what to expect in general. And before we get into the details, the nitty gritty, and break out all the information, I would like to pull out my soapbox and just make some brief statement about the market just before we get into the rest. And so what I have to say, to whom it may concern, because some people may already know this, other people might be hoping for the opposite, it is no longer about getting a good deal. Those days are long gone, and this is old news. This is not new news. Nowadays, a victory, a win, something to brag about is not, man, I got the best deal on this home. It was an absolute steal. Now what you brag about is, man, I got into Austin, Texas before things got even worse than they currently are. That is something that I just wanted to make abundantly clear so that people's expectations are properly adjusted to the re to the reality of the market right now. And look, on that note, sure, homes were cheaper three months ago, six months ago, nine months ago, a year ago, so on and so forth. However, in my opinion, if you're getting a house that is more affordable than where you're coming from, and chances are that's one of the two coasts, or even if the home you're getting in Austin is comparable in affordability, but is more bang for your buck, I would absolutely say that's a good idea. I would absolutely call that a victory in this current market. So I did want to get that out of the way and make that clear for you guys. And so I have been talking with my partner, Caleb, the head of our team, getting some details and data and statistics on what the market is looking like right now. And so, um, yeah, we're going to keep it real and just give it to you guys. And so for starters, we have the crash. And yes, I literally wrote down the crash in my notes, which I'm referring to a lot of information right now. Um, and look, here's the thing. Personally speaking, I would identify as an optimist. I'm very much a glass half full person. However, on this channel, I really try to dial it down and bring you guys more realism, oftentimes bordering on pessimism just for the sake of having you guys as well informed and prepared as possible before making such an important decision such as relocating. And so regarding the crash, right? A lot of people are hoping that it happens. A lot of people are scared that it happens. And look, I don't blame you. I'm guilty of that too. I'm very intrigued by it because a majority of our business is working with people relocating to buy homes, which makes us primarily buyer's agents. And so don't get me wrong, if it would suddenly flip from a seller's market to a buyer's market, that would make our lives much easier. So yeah, I mean, even I'm curious to see what happens, but here's where I got to give you guys the realism and bordering on pessimism. Home crashes, markets, market crashes like that rarely ever happen, historically speaking. And the most recent one we can all uh, refer to would be 2008. But be honest, what happened in 2008 was very unique. There was a lot of shady things going on with lending the integrity of that industry and, and how it led to a very unique collapse of the market. And are we going to see that exact same thing happen to where that is almost what would have to happen? Probably not. And on top of that, if you read journalists or journalism articles, if you listen to economists talk about what's going on in the market right now, the general consensus is that this is only going to continue at least for a while. It's going to stay the same. Um, <laughs> so I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer right out of the gates of this video, but I am giving it to you straight. I'm, I'm keeping it real. And so on that note, let's dive right in 
and get to it. So with the unlikelihood of a market crash out of the way, especially regarding Austin, Texas specifically, because even if we separate it from the reality of the market, Austin, Texas is still a national hotspot for relocation. So with that out of the way, let's talk about demand. And this is a bit stating the obvious. I have my Captain Obvious hat on right now. We are in a seller's market across the nation because of the demand. Um, now where it gets spicy, where it gets juicy and interesting is when you factor in inventory. So especially post pandemic, people are relocating like crazy. A lot of people just want better space, especially if they're working from home, they wanna ditch the apartment, they wanna upsize their house. Um, or a lot of people, if we're talking politically, have seen the living conditions of their own states really take a turn and really change. And for a lot of people, they, they're just not liking that. And so they set their eyes on a state like Texas, which for better or worse, does things very differently. I'm not here to debate if that's right or wrong, but that is what we've seen. A lot of people just wanna to go to Texas. And so you see such a high demand and relocation, but the inventory is the interesting part. And that is because also due to the pandemic, Regarding home building and construction, that has actually very slightly dipped. And so when you have a slowed development and construction combined with such a surge in demand of people wanting to relocate, that creates a problem. And so let's run with that new construction example. Um, just because if we're talking about pre-owned sales, it is in a lot of ways smoother and smarter for whatever reason, but the reality is, can't blame you, a lot of people want new build homes, especially when they're coming to Texas and they're ready for a change. And Texas is so large, they have their sights set on it, they wanna start fresh, get a nice big home, they want it to be new, so can't blame you. But with that comes its fair share of complications, so let's explore why. Regarding new construction and what to expect with new construction, where it gets interesting is the interest rates. And so as it currently stands of the making of this video, which is June of 2022, interest rates are looking like a whopping five and a half percent. And don't get me wrong, that absolutely fluctuates. It could be a little bit lower a month from now, or it could be a little bit higher a month from now. Chances are though, a little bit higher and higher as things continue to be the way they are. And so regarding new construction, Yes, you might be able to lock in a home, let's say at 500,000, 600,000, 700,000. Um, but the, the catch to that is you might get lucky, yes, where you might find a home that is nearing completion and really you only have to wait one, two, three months in order to move into it. But a lot of the time, most of the time, especially depending on supplies and depending on the size of the house, who's building it, where it is, the process of home construction can take six months, nine months, sometimes even more than that, but thankfully not too often. And in that time period, your interest rate will fluctuate. And most of the time it will fluctuate like that, up and down, up and down, but a little bit of a higher trajectory. And so you might lock in the listing price, but when it comes time to close and move in and loan officers get involved and you're figuring out the mortgage, the interest rate might look different than it did when you went under contract, when you put down a deposit on what is most likely at that time just a lot of land and you're going off of floor plans or you're going off of a model home or you're going off of a 3D rendered tour online or something like that. So while it is more desirable, of course, to go for a new build home, this is one of the catches because let's say you lock it in at $600,000, um, but it goes from 4.5% to 5.5% in the time it takes to build your home, that is going to be a few hundred extra a month. And if you multiply that times 12, that is going to be a few extra grand, which is why I can't blame you. So many people are freaking out and they're getting cold feet and they're not wanting to buy a house. In addition to, mind you, property taxes and various insurances and other costs that are already going to be factoring into paying a mortgage and owning a house. Now, in addition to new construction, something we also get a lot and hear a lot about is the subject of renting versus buying. And I'll say before we get into this, if you are someone who just rents for life, if you're one of those people who just likes to rent and never buy, this doesn't really apply to you, more power to you. I totally get the reasoning behind that too. So this is more directed at people who are contemplating renting before inevitably buying. And here's the thing, look, uh, in your shoes, it makes perfect sense. I can't blame you whatsoever because most people with common sense, if they're relocating, especially from out of state, will want to run for six months or for 12 months and get a lay of the land, find their footing, figure out if they like the area before pulling the trigger on something as massive as buying a house. So again, I cannot fault the logic. However, uh, 
but this market has a way of doing is making something that is purely common sense and favorably logical uh, possibly questionable and the reason why is when you br bring in the financial aspects of this into the equation and so what that looks like is as previously mentioned you are already uh, in the process of being under contract for a new build home already in an uphill battle with the interest rates that fluctuate we address that in addition to that now if you choose to rent first what you're now taking on in addition to that whatever you do inevitably buy is the challenge of appreciation as mentioned earlier in this video year to date it is roughly around 25 percent appreciation much of that just in the past six months and so if you are going to rent for six months or even 12 months and then pull the trigger on a house and then deal with the uh, aforementioned subject of interest rates fluctuating now you're dealing with that and appreciation and so we have had clients in the past who find the perfect house but for whatever reason they don't pull the trigger they get cold feet or they decide to wait another month or two for inventory to come out again and see and oftentimes they'll find that perfect house that's maybe 500 or 550 and then they'll wait and then that same house or a similar house from the same builders or a same floor plan comes out a month or two later when they release a new set and all of a sudden that same house is 600 650 sometimes even 700 because right now with the market being the way it is builders <laughs> it's kind of like the wild west they can just name their price and so if that happens in just a few short months very often if you were going to wait six to twelve months and your budget might be five or six hundred thousand what that five or six hundred thousand can buy you by the time you're ready to pull the trigger is going to be dramatically different it could cost you at least a hundred thousand dollars just in the listing price alone and so again it's not bad logic to rent first it's it's not a bad idea to rent first it is a good idea and it is good logic but in this crazy market it is something now that people are having to start second guessing or at least that i would suggest thinking about just because of what the market is and how much these homes are rapidly appreciating with the demand now moving on to something else that is worth noting on the subject of this market is getting offers accepted and look if you're coming from out of state in an already competitive market you can be also working against another uphill battle which is the case of a listing agent selling a property and they have 10 offers and yours is one of the only ones if not the only one coming from out of state a lot of listing agents in that scenario are quick to be dismissive they might have a bunch of people locally that are wanting to buy the house and they see people coming from out of state and they just assume oh they're throwing their hat in the ring they're just making a quick bid they want to see if it sticks they haven't even seen the house they might pull out and so it's easy to be dismissed in that situation if you are coming from out of state which is where having buyers agents who really go to bat for you is very important and so in the case of our team something that we pride ourselves on doing is my partner Caleb, our agent Taylor, our agent Dustin, the rest of the team will work oftentimes 10 to 12 plus hours every day, seven days a week, meeting with buyers reps, calling listing agents, meeting with mortgage lenders and, and doing tours to the point where they hear from us. And it's like, oh, you guys again, because we are just workhorses and we're always talking to these people and so where that goes a long way in this industry is relationships and who you know especially a proven track record of getting out of state clients into these homes and closing which is something that thankfully in this market we've been able to do successfully and so similar to hollywood if you've ever heard the term of it's not how hard you work in hollywood it's who you know similar in real estate except in real estate you also have to work very hard um, but it is about who you know and so if you are dealing with a listing agent that has all these offers and you're trying to get yours accepted that can easily look like having your clients writing a personal letter to the sellers and the listing agent and going to bat for them that way bringing in a local lending agent with pre-approval letters and notes and things like that to really make the case and get your offer accepted a lot of real estate agents that are new in this market i do sympathize and feel bad because in this market it's so hard to even get started and so they they if they don't know the right people if they don't have enough of a track record they can be out of the industry as quickly as they got into it and so it is in large part due to who you work with who has the reputation who has the connections who knows all of the builder reps by name in every suburb and so that is something worth mentioning it is something to keep in mind it's, it's important to choose who it is you go into battle with who is going to go to bat for you and that's another reason 
why this channel we feel is so important is because it's also about knowing the area because if you're coming from out of state a lot of people just go to the hottest most popular areas which in austin's case is leander texas but if you're working with people who are from here and know the areas and go all over the place and you watch our videos that might have only 10 views because no one knows the place that we're talking about, the Mainers of the world, the Butas of the world, the Taylors of the world, the Bastrops of the world, so on and so forth, that might have what you want. That might be more affordable or less in demand than the Leanders of the world, right? That can also increase your chances too in watching the videos that we make to educate yourselves on what these places has to have to offer, what the cons are, what the pros are, so on and so forth. So yes, it very well might be the worst time to buy a house in Austin, Texas, and it might be the scariest time to pack up and relocate. But if those economists are correct in their assumption that things are just not gonna slow down as many people are hoping, at least for the time being, then that might mean for you, now might be better than later. And if that is the case, that is what we are here for, helping people just like you relocate to Austin, Texas, knowing the right people, going to bat for you, getting offers accepted, knowing areas that have yet to explode as opposed to areas that are already exploding. But the only way we can do that is again by you reaching out. So again, don't hesitate whether you're nine days away or 90, reach out to our team, whether you shoot us a text, send us an email, give us a call any day of the week, any time of day. And again, every week we put out new content about living in Austin, Texas, the good and the bad. So remember to subscribe if you haven't already and ring that little bell to get notified whenever we put out a new video. Comment down below, like this video if we've been providing any value for you, share it with anybody you know, and until the next one, you guys, my name is Frank, this is Living in Austin, Texas, and we will absolutely catch you later.